Hello, my name is Viktor Vankevich. I'm Development Operations Engineer in ETD team. Today I'm going to show you how to use ETD sizing tool and where you could find it. To determine your sizing requirement, please open SAP node 2835374. Uh, here in the attachments, you could find the Excel file. This Excel file, uh, you could either choose one of the t-shirt sizes or work with custom values. The system calculates the size and requirements depending on your entries. Now let's take a look at it more in detail and I will show you how it works. When you started it, you see here four tabs. One is ETD sizing, the other ones for different setups. For non-high availability setup, for reasonable high availability setup and maximum high availability setup. Of course, the easiest mode is non-high availability setup and for sure then there are high availability setups. Uh, now we need to enter some input parameters and determine how many logs will arrive. We know it's rather difficult to find out how many logs arrived uh, within the landscape of SAP system, systems. So we did an estimation with the persons working in an SAP system. And it's really persons, uh, not the user license, and it's not the number of users ID. It's really a person who working uh, the whole day in SAP system. Uh, directly and indirectly, log data is created when these persons work in systems. And this number uh, need to be determined and then to be entered. Uh, you could use already predefined values from t-shirt size numbers or set your own custom number of employees producing data. So you could choose from this drop-down menu or you could set custom value and enter your number. For example, 1000. Uh, next input parameter that need to be entered is retention time for normalized log events, uh, means the retention time of ETD logs. For compliance reasons or because one would want to look at this data for a certain amount of time, uh, that the retention time in ETD uh, and standard would be maybe from 15 to 30 days. But you can decide on your own and you can enter some value here. So here is 30 days. Uh, the next parameters are retention time for original log events and retention time for unrecognized log events. In ETD, there are very important parameters because they cause much more memory consumption than normalized logs. And by that, it's important that this is considered also. So you could also put here some numbers, for example, five days, and five days. Uh, original logs can be compressed very much and therefore we have retention time in ETD. And as you know, you can keep your provider with retention time for the original log data events and you could provide the retention time for unrecognized logs within ETD here also and um, that is the same size as they need the same amount of space as the original log events and by that uh, the storing of such data is rather critical from a memory consumption point of view. So that's why you should also put uh, um, the values depending on your estimation. Then, because we do not only have ETD, you know, 
We also have smart data streaming and we have Kafka components within the whole installation. And we need to define what the retention time would be in Kafka. Uh, and normally we need to define a time range, which is the maximum time a system might be down. So ETD system might be down. So we currently think it's maybe 24 hours or one day and with some buffer, you could have maybe two days. And then sizing is calculated for the Kafka for storing the data. So if the data arrives in the central data, smart data streaming and goes to the Kafka, but cannot be consumed by the HANA. For example, because of downtime or for any whatever reasons. So maybe one or two days you could put here. Additionally, if it comes to non-SAP scenarios, uh, you know we have also log learning and any customer can connect any kind of log data. And normally, uh, if it's IT component logs, uh, they they know very exact how many IT components logs arrived because they might have a central syslog server or they might already have a CM system in place or Splunk in place <clears throat> where they consume all this data. So additionally, to the SAP users working in the SAP system, you can put the number of non-SAP log events that additionally arrive from somewhere else here. Example, 2,000 logs per second. Uh, and in order to calculate that, we can calculate additionally whether these logs are really round or whether these are percentage of unrecognized logs out of this number of log records per second. Uh, that means, let's assume we have 1,000, 100 percent of logs per second and we learn 30 percent that means the percentage of unrecognized logs would be 70 percent in this case you would enter here 70 percent so 70 percent which means the storage for unrecognized logs rises and the storage for normalized logs shrinks so it goes down a little bit. Next parameters correspond for warm and cold storages. These are drop down fields to say if warm storage is enabled or not enabled. And also the same for cold storage. And uh, there are these fields are then for retention time of warm and cold storage. So maybe for warm it's 90 days and for cold is one year or you could easily put here any numbers of days so how long would uh, would you like to store your logs here on the right side there is a calculation based these value stands for how do we know how many log events are created by users and how big they are. So for normalized log event size, it's 60 bytes and for original unrecognized log event is 300 bytes. Also here you could find the compression rate for the Kafka data. Uh, these are best practice average values that were measured from within SAP uh, from productive SAP system. So these are average values. These are best practice values and we can plausibly work with these values without need of changing that. At the end, this sums up as we enter all the input parameters and we have intermediate calculations. So we entered parameters here and from the right side we see intermediate calculations uh, with, uh, which lead us to final result. 
the calculation are summed together. Uh, so here you could find how many log events arrived per day and intermediate calculations for hot storage for SAP HANA, intermediate calculations for warm storage also. And here uh, the size and result with the final calculation values for SAP HANA, for streaming analytics, for Kafka, for Zookeeper, for warm storage and for cold storage. Uh, and now I come to the different types uh, here that show the different setups that we suggest and set up and you could set up it if you want. Uh, typically for small customers or POC setups, we have a non-high availability setup. Uh, here is a non-high availability setup. And here in this case, we have only two servers. One server is the HANA with ETD, with Virtual Machine 1. And the second server is SDS plus Kafka plus the Keeper. So these machines sums up with the sizes of the different components uh, from the previous tab. If you look here, you would see 64 plus 4 plus 1. And you he see here 71 gigabytes for main memory. And also, this also sums for cores and for disk uh, for OS. Mm. So this is the easiest setup that we allow. Uh, and uh, this is not the high availability. And if the HANA goes down and does not work anymore, ETD does not work. If the preprocessor server does not work anymore or any of these components does not sync in components and does not does not work anymore, ETD does not work anymore. Uh, next up is reasonable have availability setup, which means we duplicate more or less these machines. Uh, so this is reasonable high availability setup. And now we go with four servers instead of two servers. We have two HANs here, first machine and second machine. And these are connected to the so-called system replications. System replications, that means you have a mirror database here. Uh, also, we have two preprocessors together with the load balancer. Because uh, these two preprocessors can, can now work separately, that means if one of these machines uh, does not work anymore. The second machine still works, and that and uh, can take the log data and put it uh, into the HANA. So uh, by that we have another cal calculation uh, of sizes. Uh, first of all, we have uh, two HANAs with same sizes, uh, but here uh, with second HANA. Uh, we have also we need to install a third zookeeper and uh, by that we add one gigabyte more so this is shown here uh, then we have server 3 which still contains a zookeeper and kafka broker and of course a smart uh, data streaming uh, which has 71 gigabytes and here we have second data streaming engine, but here is the difference. You see, uh, it's 190 gigabytes. And the reason for that is that this machine, machinery uses also this HANA in order to store its metadata. It means uh, it does not need an additional, it, it does need an additional small HANA below. Uh, and uh, it means 
it does not store the metadata in this HANA, but stores in separate small HANA. This, mean, this means if you want to have high availability, you would need two servers for HANA and two servers for log preprocessor with different sizes. And additional components needed because you need to take care about whether these two available or not for maintenance reasons if, and for whatever an outage reason. And now if one HANA goes down, the other one is here. If Zookeeper goes down, the other is here. And if Kafka goes down, the other is here and available by that. Uh, the next and final tab is the maximum high availability setup. Uh, this setup is only a theoretical sort of example. So if you really have big fears, so you can go to maximum high availability. Uh, that means we make out of each box an extra system. Uh, so out of each and any component, you make an own box. And that means it sums up to nine boxes. So nine here virtual machines. Um, and which uh, they are partly rather small, but partly as big as we had before. So we have the big HANAs. We have uh, HANA and preprocessor one, and HANA and preprocessor two. Uh, also, we have HANA below this, and a small HANA below this to store its metadata. Uh, and in this HANA, even so, it's for preprocessor only, and by that it, it erases for 140 gigabytes. Uh, so, uh, uh, with this setup, we have the symmetric. So, we have own Kafka servers, one Kafka server, two also the keepers one two and three and with small sizes uh, so this is high availability setup maximum high availability setup uh, so it comes out as a result and uh, by that we have about 10 entry points and normally not more is needed. So by completing these values, you would get the final calculation result. So as I said, you could choose and enter your custom values or choose something from t-shirt. And then numbers would be calculated automatically. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and listening.